everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another Kit Crunch start to finish. Yes, that's what we're going to do today. And I have some cute little photos of my cute little one when she was just not even three years old. Oh boy. <laughs> I wasn't planning on using these photos. It's just that while my little one was home on break, we happened to be going through some photos and we were looking at these and I thought, oh, you know what? I, these were just leftovers. And so I thought, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to play with this and it just, you know, takes you back in time a little bit. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. And so I have my uh, Kit Crunch, which my inspiration was uh, The Freeze in Season by Simple Stories. And that is what I'm going to play with. And I'm going to do a double page because I have, I think was seven or eight of these photos and these were leftovers and isn't it amazing that when you do a layout what you consider leftovers today becomes a precious photo tomorrow or the next month or the next year this was how many years ago <laughs> oh man was that 19 and yeah 19 years ago Yes, 19 years ago. And so uh, these are just about as precious as can be. So glad I kept these leftovers and I'm absolutely going to do a two page. And I am going to show you what I'm going to use for a title, show you what I'm going to use for a sketch, and show you what I'm going to use for embellishments. Because, uh, of course, I'm going to play with everything that was in my Kit Crunch. I'm not going to get out of my seat to do anything. And I have this sketch from Page Maps, which you know I love their sketches because I love the emphasis on embellishments. And so if you're the type of scrapbooker who wants a sketch to give you exact measurements and you like using a lot of photos, I want to recommend Scrapbook Generations. I will have their link below. If you are someone who likes sketches, but maybe you would need help with embellishment placement, Page Maps is the one to go. So there's a little bit of difference uh, with those sketches, and it's all good. I love it all. And of course, don't forget the Laura Whitaker sketchbook. That's basically one-page sketches, and they're not as um, multi-photo as some of these Page Maps and Scrapbook Generations, and I'll have that listed below. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to absolutely use this two-page sketch as a springboard. And I liked how the photos spanned across. So I like that. And then, of course, you know, I only have a certain number of papers. So I have to plan how I'm going to do a two-page layout because, you know, I don't have duplicates of any of my papers. And I liked how they had tags. And, of course, you know, I have my snowflake punch here that was part of one of my uh, inspirations for my kit and so I'm definitely going to play with this and so that is why when I saw this sketch and I saw this scalloped edge going from left to right on both pages made me think of that and so that's what I'm going to do so I need to pick my papers and so of course you know my little one is wearing a pink of course and so of course anything I pick in here and she's in the snow and her little boots and her sled and her toys so anything that I pick in this kit will be fun now my little one when she came into my room the other day she saw this laying on my desk and she said you have to use that so I am going to use this as a starting point because she asked me to use that of course she just got the pink one like she did and then when I was looking at this and we were talking about it I said, you know, this is how I'm going to do my title, and I'm going to use one of my inspiration pieces as the inspiration for my title. And I love doing that when you see supplies and it does the work for you. So you see this little three before card says flurries of fun. That's exactly what my title is going to be. So thank you, Simple Stories. You gave me not only <laughs> some embellishment, but you gave me my title idea. And so I already know that in this kit I only had two uh, thickers and so it's going to be this one it's more whimsical and plus I haven't played with it so I'm just going to get out my wax paper and I'm going to put flurries of fun if I have enough but I definitely could cut some up you know but that's what I'm going to do and I may put the year on there which was absolutely almost to the day 19 years ago wow time flies yes along with flurries of fun <laughs> yes and so I'm definitely going to use my punch and of course, you know, I had uh, my embossing that I played with. What did I do with that? I had embossing somewhere. Maybe I lost it, but I have embossing somewhere. Okay, I have that. And so I definitely, now see, that'll bug me. What did I do with that? Maybe I put it away already. <laughs> I don't know. I've been really working on when I play with something, put it away. Play with something, put it away. Because I don't want to spend a day putting things away. So I don't think I put it away. but Or maybe it's over by my heat gun. We'll look for it. So anyways, but then I also have this paint. So these are the two things I pulled out from a Kit Crunch haven't played with. So the since they're sitting here, that just gives me a little bit of a motivation, rather than have to go get it, to go ahead and start playing with it. Okay, so I have some pearl 
This is Ranger, and what do they call it? Pearl Metallic. So I was thinking about making something with some snowballs. So I'll show you uh, how that may or may not work. <laughs> we'll show. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll show that too. So, and then of course, uh, when I was looking at the sketch, by page maps and I definitely will probably just mat each one of these in white to make them pop a little bit I'll just use scrap paper for that and then I also saw they had banners and tags and of course I had that in some of my kit and I pulled that frame I pulled these tags of course that's got a mitten cute any of this was going to work and then I had this piece I uh, this is an odd shaped but you never know maybe I could put that in my title on that like I did the last time I used that frame and then, of course, I have these icicles. And then the showstopper is that in my kit, I had this pink fringe. And I love when this happens in our process because I put this in the kit, had no idea that I would be absolutely playing with these type of photos. And this uh, pink coat that she had on, it was quilted, had some hand stitching. Well, not hand stitching, you know. Uh, had, you know, some blanket stitching. And tell me that that is not going to be perfect. So I am must 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 use this pink fringe on this page I don't know how I'm going to do it but I know it's going to land on that page so it's time to be creative and uh, keep on playing with this kit crunch and this freezing season inspiration piece so I will come back with some paint a punch and a little bit of fun <laughs> okay flurries of fun yes okay hold on Okay, I am back with my finished page and I did a two page, which was so fun because I had seven photos from 19 years ago. <laughs> Love, love that. Okay, so what I did was since I was working on a two-page spread and when I was building the kit, I didn't know I was going to make a two-page spread, of course, so I didn't have to have two pages of anything. And you can absolutely make a two-page spread without having two pieces of paper. And since I started building page kits, you know, several years ago, I had to get out of that by two, by two, because you make, <laughs> might make a two-page spread. Now, that doesn't always work with my thinking when I buy paper, but I I try to tell myself I don't have to have two pieces of paper to make a two page layout. So what I did was I looked at my sketch and I was just trying to figure out where that was. And it was a, a page maps from April 2016. I will have the link below. And so I saw that they had uh, this polka dotted paper and striped paper and it spread from left to right. And so that's exactly what I did. So with my one piece of paper, which is this pink dots here, this came from Echo Park and it is from Dots and Stripes and it is called Rose petal dot. I'm sure a lot of us have that because we all love Echo Park. Okay. And then the same with same way with this camera paper, that is a Chamel paper. And that was from the little by little line. I know we all went gaga over that. And that was called happy progress. And so what I did was I took that pink polka dot and I cut it in four three inch strips and the same way with the camera I cut it into four three inch strips so just three inches and so that meant I got a, a three inch strip here three inch here here and here and it's the same way with the pink and so that is how I split up and use this page design with only two pieces of paper as far as this outer paper and then, of course in the middle I used my inspiration piece of that simple stories freeze and season and it was those houses there okay now you'll see that in my papers I gave some a border some I took to the edge and some I gave a shorter border and why did I do that mood and feel because this was a whimsical page so I made my paper cuts and a little bit of whimsical I did not go so structured and then where would I go okay so Let's talk about what I did with the photos because all I did was simply take them in the size they were. I didn't trim them down. I used them as they were and I mattered each one in white cardstock. And you see how that spreads across. Okay, seven photos. And you see that every one of them is overlapping, gives a connecting feel to the spread. And then also, too, I had uh, just some bushes here that was in front of the house. So not only did I overlap it with this, then I took another small photo and overlapped it entirely on top of my other two overlaps. So if you have some space, same way over here here on the right. I had just some more bushes with snow. I didn't need that because my little girl is the center stage. I just put that penguin on top of that. So that's how I did my photos. And then of course with my strips, I added some washi and this was what was in my kit. And I did that trick again where I took two rows of washi on top of each other to give me more of a more whimsical look with my washi. And so that's all I did. Now let's talk about the border that I did here down at the bottom because I did some playing again with some embossing powder 
Where is my embossing powder? I'm always losing this little sucker. Yeah, there's my embossing powder. It was just cold white. And so then I took my Martha Stewart Mega Punch, you know, the one that has wings, and I took some white cardstock, and I, you know, did a border punch of the snowflakes. And then I embossed that whole complete 12 inches, and then I layered it on top of two other pieces of punched snowflakes. So basically what I did is I created faux chipboard. Yes, not only faux chipboard, faux embossed chipboard. And so that's all again. That's all I did is that I punched and then I embossed just the top layer and then I stacked it on top of two more punched pieces. So that is how you do it, gals. That's how you make faux uh, embossed chipboard. You can do it yourself with anything that you have. And so, of course, this gives much dimension down here. And again, this is a whimsical page. So not only do I have whimsical, but I also have tux texture and I also have color. Okay, so now let's talk about what I did up at the top here, because on that faux embossed chipboard, I did it here. And I did it here, okay? And I'll have some videos linked below how you can do DIY chipboard. I'll show that, okay? But I did emboss chipboard. And my little girl <laughs> was looking at it a little bit ago. She said, well, I think I see what happened here. There's a little spot missing. I said, hey, it's a whimsical page. It's not perfect. She goes, oh, is that what we're calling it? And I said, yes, because my embossing is not perfect. And I don't stress for perfect. I uh, My goal is to get it documented. Record the story. I'm not going for perfection. So if we look at the top here of course you know down here we have this echo park uh, polka dot paper and then up here it's the same paper but what i did was i got playing with some of my paint and so i took some of my ranger ink my pearl metallic i would have used any white that's just what i had in my kit and i put some just on a uh, piece of plastic transparency here and then i just took a pencil eraser mixed this all up and I dipped this brand new it has to be a brand new pencil eraser because you want that perfect image and I would dip that in the paint and I would take that right over top of each one of those polka dots and that is what you have it's like a little snowball effect some of it has little raised edges totally fun to do so not only do I have some texture down here at the bottom with my embossed chipboard I also have some uh faux snowballs up here just using that paint with a tip of a pencil eraser learned that trick many many years ago. i think it was one of the first i would say it was probably back in the 90s yes that i learned that <laughs> tip you know to do with paint and a pencil eraser when was the last time you did that that's an old school trick okay so then of course with my title i used this simple stories inspiration of flurries of fun and I used that tag that was in my kit, that pink tag, used that as a title base. And you know, I had to get on that pink fringe ribbon. I had no idea that when I put that in the kit, it just went with the kit, you know, of course. I had no idea I'd be doing it with these photos of my little one. And I'm telling you what, even my little girl, which doesn't get too excited about scrapbooking, she said, oh boy, is that perfect. And it is, because it's the feel of how her little coat felt. I still remember that. And then of course, just added some bits and bobs, took my tacky glue to each one of those thickers. And I gotta talk about those thickers in a minute. And then just some other things as I took a journaling card, cut the top of it to give me a subtitle and little uh, a bread and little pieces for my thickers. Now I'm gonna point to this end here and I hope you can see it. See how this end is all messed up. And that's exactly how it was on my sheet. And so, because what happens is thickers, they get on top of one another and they get messed up. So that was the only N I had. I could not take an M and turn it into an N. I thought, what am I going to do? I thought, well, if you can't beat them, join them. So I absolutely took my fingernail and I distressed the rest of those letters so it could match that one N that was all messed up. And so I thought, well, you know, when you're outside, nothing's pristine. So my title's not pristine. It has some distressing to it. And so, of course, you'll notice with my eye in flurries, what did I use? An exclamation point. So sometimes I'll do that on purpose if I'm out of eyes. I use that a lot. Or if you want something whimsical, replace the I in your title with an exclamation point just something fun and then it's fun to see if your reader uh, picks up on that so that's totally fun got a paper clip on it a little bit of transparency slide and then I got that frame in and you'll see the other part of this frame on the right side of the page because I took this canvas frame and cut it in half and used it in two spots a couple little breads and this was a sweetheart that's stitching that was already on the frame how fun is that Okay, so on the right, I absolutely did almost the same as I did on the right. I did the paint with a snowball technique, used my turquoise paper, did my washi. There's the other part of that frame, and I just had cut that in half, so there's the top of it. And it makes one little kind of big 
photo cluster here because my photo is encompassed in between that cluster. Of course, Fussy cut that penguin out of that three or four card, little bits and bobs, and some snowflakes, and added a word sticker. Now, with this, I wanted to show that this cluster over here is big. And why did I need to do that? Because I don't have a visual triangle here and I don't have a visual triangle on the left. And because this is a spread, my, and I'm hoping I can get all this in. I think I can. I sound like uh, Thomas the, what is that? Thomas the Tank Engine? I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> yes, okay. So right here is my, I don't have a visual triangle. So your eye goes here to here to here, okay? And because this is such a heavy title, cluster, subtitle over here, I wanted to make sure that equally on the right, I had something that was just as heavy and balanced here on the right. Okay, so uh, I think that was about it as far as, again, adding the same thing. Now, you'll see here on the left, and I wanted to bring this up for when we do two-page spreads because sometimes we want to do exactly what's on the left, do exactly on the right. But if you're working with a kit and you're working with a, a certain amount of supplies, you can't always do that. So you see here, I only had enough to make a little bit of an embellishment here with that plaid. And so over here, I had enough to make a 12-inch. And it's okay that this little, I think this is about a half inch uh, plaid piece here, this strip, it's okay that I don't have it here on the left. You just have to do with what you had. But if you notice, I have a visual triangle with that plaid because it's here, here, and here. Okay? Sorry, there's something going by. I hate that. But what I wanted to show with that, even if you have the smallest of scraps, let me turn this over a minute. Even if you have the smallest of scraps, and that's a small scrap, you can still make an embellishment from it. And I think, well, again, this is Laura Whitaker. I mean, that she taught me so much. Sorry. I hate that. We've just had so much bad weather and ice and, you know, uh, anyways. Ugh, I just, I don't like that. It always hurts my soul hearing that sound. But anyways, you can take the smallest of scraps and you can make an embellishment because I'll show you on my page where uh, they were very small. Okay, now I'm left-handed, so it's kind of hard for me, but I'm gonna put this in here. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put this in my circle punch and my circle punches usually aren't too far. It's either my hexagon or my circle punches. So right there, I made an embellishment out of that smallest of scraps, right there's one and here is the other part of that. Okay, now if you're someone who builds clusters and you do layering and clusters, those little things right there, the smallest of things with that smallest of scrap, there's embellishment. So don't let your circle punches or hexagon punches too far from your reach, okay? And I will absolutely keep these in my little thing. I want to show you that because you can take this and you see what I'm saying? That smallest of scrap can make an embellishment if you're playing with a certain amount of supplies in a kit. Now, I don't normally keep those smallest scraps when I'm done with the layout, but when I want, when I have a small scrap in the process of a page, yeah, you can uh, bet your bottom dollar I'm going to use that for an embellishment, okay? I have that one stuck on there. <laughs> I have to get it now. It went completely under. So that is how those small scraps, I love my circle punch for that, okay? So I think that was it. Now, there's the only other thing I wanted to say, I'm looking around, is the journaling. And so I'm going to say come back to the next layout lunch date because you will see this layout make an appearance again and we're going to talk about the journaling because there's some things I wanted to share about some journaling, some things I've learned along the way and uh, how you can encompass more than one story when you're doing some journaling. So that is my flurries of fun using these leftover photos from 19 years ago to do this two-page spread and I'm in love with it. My little girl's in love with it. We had fun just looking at these photos and she had fun reading the journaling we had some laughs and then you know oh the things that you miss so I will say if you are the mom of a little one the one thing I want to say is I was looking through these photos one of the dearest photos actually the two dearest photos that is here on this spread are the two that my little girl didn't even know I took and I think that was what we what a lot of us would say looking at photos is when you can capture your children or anybody really in the moment when they don't even know you're doing it. I think those make for the best photos looking back on them. And so there, that is the most precious little dearest thing. <laughs> She's sitting there playing and you know, she doesn't even know I'm taking a photo. So if you have little ones or big ones or fur ones, <laughs> take pictures when they're not looking. I love that. Okay, so that is all I have for this kit crunch on this two-page spread, 
But guess what? You know I'm never done with anything. So come back next week at this time, and I am going to absolutely take the remaining pieces of this Kit Crunch, and we're going to keep on playing. However... I'm going to show you something that I've been doing for well, several years, and uh, you'll be a little bit surprised as to what it is when it comes to this kit. So that's all I'm going to say. So come back to next week, and when you see what we're going to do with these leftover pieces, because they're still very, very pretty, what are we going to do with them? We're going to see. Okay, so that's all I have for today for this start to finish for this kit crunch two-page spread. Absolutely love it. Definitely the winter theme, and I love being able to scrapbook in the season. Yes, don't always have time to do that. No. Okay. So come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.